Today, I wanna to try to convince you why you shouldn't run Click and Tracks live. Hey everyone, welcome back to Behind the Space Bar. This is the podcast where musicians, music directors, playback techs, really anyone performing on stage with Ableton Live. Do not adjust your screen. Do not change the channel on your radio. Uh, you did hear what I said correctly. Today, my goal is to try to convince you, share a couple of reasons why I don't think you should use Click and Tracks Live. Now, I do want to stress, this episode is not like a gotcha episode where it's like, number one is if you're stupid, number two is if you're dumb, uh, then you shouldn't use Click and Tracks Live. That's not the goal. But what I wanted to do is, um, you know, I, I post a brand new tutorial every single day on, uh, on YouTube, 10 a.m. Central. If you haven't yet, then hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon. Um, but Mondays is, is obviously behind the space where it's a podcast. It's an opportunity to kind of talk a little bit, to share. Uh, often these videos are like top five things, top seven things. Not because, um, uh, you know, some people do that for like clickbaity thing. For me, it's just because uh, these are many workshops, many opportunities to really dive deep to say why you should do things, why you shouldn't. Um, over the past year, I posted a lot just talking about how to transition to click, how to transition to tracks, um, how to, to start doing this, how to start doing that. And, and I talk about why quite often. Uh, and it makes sense. This is a channel about performing on stage with Ableton Live. It's a channel about um, uh, using click and tracks live. So I should talk about that. But um, maybe once every month, it's probably more like once every two months, I'll get someone that's very, very angry in the comments that says, yeah, but so-and-so doesn't use click. Yeah, but so-and-so doesn't use tracks. Or inevitably someone comes up like they think it's the first time I've ever heard this and they say, I remember the good old days back when uh, musicians used to really play their instruments, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, I've made it a rule, uh, you know, of mine to not argue with people on the internet. I don't take offense at things people say that I, I don't know. If I know you personally and you say you're fat and ugly and really bad on video, then maybe I'll take you seriously. Otherwise, you're just an angry guy living in your mom's basement. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, well, maybe the angry bit. But um, I, I just kind of in one ear, out the other. But I thought this would be kind of fun today because um, I've talked, gosh, I don't know, a month, two months ago about the importance of context and how important context is. And I think one of the contexts I want to lean into it again and talk about just briefly is the context of when you should not use click and when you should not use tracks. Because despite this being a channel where I talk about using click and tracks and, and despite me thinking it's super important and despite me clearly seeing the benefit of people using it and despite me knowing uh, and seeing it proven time and time again that uh, a good band can become a great band by using click and tracks, I don't think it's for everyone. Okay. Enough intro, super long intro. Uh, my my retention rate on YouTube is going to go down, but screw retention rate because uh, I'm here to help people. So um, let's let's talk about this. Let's dive in. Let's talk about uh, the first reason why I think you shouldn't use click in tracks. Um, number one reason why you shouldn't use click in tracks or consider not using click in tracks is if you're performing by yourself. Um, I think the importance of using a click escalates and goes up higher the more people are in, uh, playing with you, right? If you're playing in, in a band together with a lot of people, uh, click can be a really useful thing to keep everyone on time and sync on the same page. But if you're playing by yourself, um, that need kind of goes away. Now, depending on the type of music you're playing, again, you may be listening to this. I know for a fact there are some people that listen to this that are DJs. They do not play a traditional instrument. Their instrument is a computer. And yes, I do believe a computer is an instrument. Um, in your case, uh, you may, you, I mean, you probably don't need a click, you're performing, but I do know I'm thinking of Andy Hunter. Uh, he was the very first person I interviewed on the Behind the Space Bar podcast. Um, he's kind of a producer, DJ, uh, um, and he like DJs live, but then he also uh, plays piano tracks and stuff. He may, you know, consider using click. It may be a helpful thing because of that. But let's say you're a artist, a solo artist, someone performing uh, with an acoustic guitar doing small like open mic nights, um, maybe playing at a, a, a restaurant. There was a restaurant in Austin that they always would have someone just kind of performing there. Um, you may not want to consider clicking tracks. Like it's very possible. Yes, you could play acoustic guitar. You could be, uh, you know, just in the restaurant, everyone's eating dinner or whatever. You could be playing and all of a sudden like full band comes on. Uh, full drums are, are cranking through the system and you could be singing, uh, singing, playing guitar with tracks, right? That's, that's very, very possible. Um, but you don't have to do that, right? Uh, there, there are, and I'm trying not to get to point number two. It's so easy to go there because that probably should have been point number one because it's just in the back of my mind very strongly. But um, in that, I about did it. Uh, if you're by yourself, you don't have to use click and tracks. Let, let's say for a moment, like 
um, sometimes it's nice just to hear music that is just an acoustic guitar and just a voice. I always think, in, in my mind in particular, this is my personal bias, I think one of the strongest expressions of a real true artist, someone who's a great songwriter, a great singer, is that they take their song and they strip away all kind of production-y type things and big things, and it's just them singing and, and playing acoustic guitar. And if it's just them singing and playing acoustic guitar, there's really no reason for them to have to use click, have to use tracks, right? Um, now, if they're doing automation, if they're uh, singing to video and they're using time code, uh, if they have like a pad thing going beneath them uh, and that needs to change in different parts, then maybe they need to. But um, if you're performing by yourself, it's very likely you don't have to use click. And again, every time you say anything publicly, there's always going to be one, yeah, but. And yes, there are scenarios that you could perform by yourself with tracks and it's effective, but you don't have to, okay? Right, again, if you're performing with a group of people, I think the need for click goes up, it becomes a little higher, but you don't have to. But here's number two, I was, I was trying so hard not to get to this. Um, uh, number two reason why you shouldn't use click in tracks live is the context doesn't fit. What I mean by that simply, let's go back to that example of the restaurant, and then I have an example I've used before uh, on this podcast, so bear with me if you've heard it, but let's go back to that example of um, uh, a full restaurant of people, uh, someone, a singer, songwriter, playing acoustic and, and, and singing. Let's even make it a very small restaurant. Let's even say that it's a, a, um, a really nice Italian restaurant, and it's fancy, and really expensive wine and handmade pasta and it's date night. Couples are there on date night and all of a sudden there's this schmuck in the corner uh, with a jazz arch top and all of a sudden you hear these pre-made MIDI karaoke uh, jazz like backing tracks and the guitar player just kind of starts playing. All of a sudden you're going to be eating and you're going to look over and be like, what the heck is this, right? You're going to look at the, your date and go, this doesn't make sense, right? Because the context doesn't fit. Uh, in, in the context of a, a really intimate kind of like uh, uh, experience, it's quiet. Uh, it's not meant to be like, again, let's take that scenario and let's say really nice fancy restaurant, it's date night, the lights are dim, candles are lit, and suddenly there's a DJ just blasting music uh, and you're yelling at your date across the table. The context doesn't make sense there. In the same way, a context of a, a club full of people um, and you have like a, a solo jazz guitarist on stage playing by themselves, that probably doesn't fit the context there. There are 100% contexts where using click and tracks does not fit. This is the story I've told before, so bear with me if you've already heard it, uh, but one of my favorite guitar players of all time uh, is John Pizzarelli, and my wife and I went to see uh, John and his trio. Um, gosh, this was, I believe, before my kids were born, so it was over 10 years ago now. One of my all-time favorite shows, though, it's John on guitar, a bass player, and a piano player, right? Um, I am an Able to Lime certified trainer. I've been teaching people how to do this for, um, let's see, 12, 14, I think 16 years maybe now. It's been a very, very long time. But I've been teaching people to use click and tracks, perform with click and tracks on stage for a very long time. That's my thing. That's how I make my living. Like this is what I do full time. If I walked in that concert, as a guy who loves doing this, teaches people how to do that. And John stepped on stage and he said, hey, we're so glad you're here. And the first thing he does is reaches over to a computer and presses space bar. Um, I would have been really, really disappointed because in that context, in that moment, I wanted to see three musicians interacting, um, playing off of each other, soloing, speeding up, slowing down. The context wouldn't fit. Now, again, any statement you make, everyone's going to say, yeah, but yes, they could have flexibility. They could perform with tracks and they could repeat and jump around and do all those sorts of things. That's what we talk about in this channel. But the context doesn't fit. A jazz trio playing a, a great set, um, uh, the context doesn't fit, in my mind, for click and tracks. Now, a, a great way to be creative and a great way to uh, create something new is to to add something to a context that doesn't seem like it fits, right? So yeah, let's do a jazz trio with click and tracks and stuff. And, and uh, you know, maybe you're playing synth sounds and that sort of thing. But that's not going to be advertised as like just a jazz trio that's just playing in a club in Jupiter, Florida, right? Um, so context is super, super important, okay? Super, super important. Now, if you're someone that's listening, watching this, 
and uh, you uh, want to use clicking tracks on stage, if that's the sort of thing you're into, then consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Uh, you can hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon. Every single day, 10 a.m. Central, I post a brand new tutorial. Mondays are this, Behind the Space Bar. You can also find Behind the Space Bar, which is a podcast, uh, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, anywhere kind of major podcast uh, can be found. Uh, and so if that's you, then uh, subscribe over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it is. Leave us a rating or review if you can. Um, that really helps. It helps people discover the content. So, um, but if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe, enable the bell icon. Okay. Number three, this one is going to be monumental, especially for those of you, uh, angry people that live in your mom's basement. Your internet is kind of spotty. So you're exceptionally angry that day. And, and you tend to comment on every video about click and tracks and either say, Oh, I remember back when musicians used to really play music. Uh, if that's you, here's, here's, I don't want you to miss this. This is a big reason why you shouldn't use clicks and tracks. Okay. Ready? Ready for this? Number three, you shouldn't use click and tracks live if you don't want to, okay? Uh, we live in a society, we live in a world, I have to be careful to choose my words here, where if anyone makes any statement and I disagree with that statement, uh, I feel like they are personally attacking me. So me saying, um, here's five reasons why your band should use click and track. Someone out there has got to comment to let me know how terrible I am and why no one ever should use clicks and click and tracks. It's kind of like, your life is so miserable and you're so frustrated by using click and tracks. All of our life should be miserable by, by not using click and tracks. But um, I think sometimes we forget if you don't want to use click and tracks, then don't use click and tracks. Now, I've talked a lot before about how I think using click, using tracks on stage is a discipline and it's something that is a skill that you have to grow. More about that in a moment and you have to get better at. And I think it's a professional skill that if you add to your skill set, you'll get more gigs. You'll be able to play in more advanced bands. You'll be able to ups, uh, upscale your production, uh, take your production to another level if you're playing with Click. But here's the thing, maybe you're just getting together and you're like jamming in your, your buddy's garage and you're playing cover tunes or um, you know, maybe you're playing weddings or maybe you're doing karaoke stuff in a, in a bar uh, and you're just having fun and it's not a professional thing and you have no interest of going bigger than that and none of you in the band want to use click then don't use click right like who says you have to right some guy on the internet uh, and sometimes there was someone recently who commented and they were trying to say uh you know because someone in their mind who is a major artist doesn't use click and i'm a guy in a studio in my home recording saying you should use click that no one should use click and i just kind of thought well buddy that that connection doesn't it doesn't connect for me there i appreciate what you're trying to do there it doesn't connect for me but man who cares if i'm saying you should use click who cares if uh your favorite band uses click and tracks if you don't want to just don't do it right just take a chill pill everybody calm down just because some people do it doesn't mean you're going to be forced to do it. And just because someone encourages people to use click and tracks doesn't mean that you have to be forced to use click and tracks. Again, we, we could talk, I could talk till I'm blue in the face with the reasons and benefits why, but you don't necessarily have to. Okay, here's our final reason. Uh, I got to be careful to not let these episodes become cranky old Uncle Will just complaining the whole time, which some some days they, they become that. But this is the final one. Um, Number four reason why you shouldn't use click and tracks live is if you are not ready yet. And what I mean by that is if you don't have the proper equipment, if you don't have in-ears, please don't try to use click and tracks live. Two, if, if you don't have the skill yet to play with a click and uh, keep in time, then don't try to play with click live on stage. Now, we've talked before uh, in some videos on this channel, uh, some podcast episodes, we've talked about how to transition to click. One of the things just really quick I always talk about is like, it should be something that you take time to do. It's not something you decide on Wednesday you're gonna use click and on Thursday's band rehearsal, suddenly everything you're using click on. You gotta give it time, you gotta introduce it slowly. Uh, particularly, let's say a scenario, you and your buddies get together Friday nights, you play at a local bar, karaoke thing, open mic thing. Don't decide on Thursday that you wanna do that Friday and the very first time you, you use click uh, together is live on stage, don't make that the case, right? So if you're not ready yet, and it's okay if you're not ready yet, don't use click and tracks live on stage. Again, there's a, uh, I call it the 3T transition timeline, really cheesy name, but um, when it comes to the three, the transition uh, to this, you've got to transition to in-ears, you've got to transition to click, and then eventually you transition to tracks. Um, 
if, if you haven't made any one of those pieces yet, then don't jump to the end and start using tracks. I know so many people that have failed miserably because they, again, jumped from nothing to 100% in. They're using tracks, they're automating everything, and they, they expected to learn it and master it in a week. Uh, I've been doing this for, again, over 16 years, I think close to 18 now, if I count before I was a certified trainer, before I had kids, and I'm still learning stuff. And it changes every single year. There's new software, there's new MIDI controllers, there's new things that make it easy, that make it more complicated. Um, it, it's a process, right? And if you're not ready yet, it's okay. It's okay if you're not ready, it's okay if you just don't want to. Um, but I do wanna end, end with this. I would encourage you, like I mentioned before, using Click on Sage is a skill. And I have found in my experience working with, uh, with solo artists, working with bands, working with church bands, work, working with, and, and it's funny to see similar experiences across all of those, working with cover bands, working with bands that um, uh, are traveling the world, playing stadiums, all of those scenarios, um, the people that are resistant to click, it's nine times, I'm gonna say 100% of the time, I'm gonna just make a very bold declarative statement there. 100% of the time, they're against playing with click because they can't yet. They've yet to have that skill. So again, if you just don't wanna play with click, that's perfectly fine. But if you're pushing back on using click because you can't play with click in time quite yet, I just wanna encourage you, again, this is not me attacking you. It's not telling me you should be forced to play click or you're too old because you didn't used to play click and now the young kids are using click and you're not allowed to play in the band and, and play with the cool kids. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to say I would highly encourage you to build that skill, right? To, to get better at that skill, to learn that skill. Playing with a click is a skill. You may not think it is, but it is a skill. That's why uh, my daughter, you know, taking piano lessons, one of the first things she's learning to do is play in time with a metronome. Uh, and again, we could argue on, well, metronome is a studio tool. It's not meant to be used live. Perfect, that's great. But there's a lot of people that use it live. There's a lot of benefits and your career will go much further. And I think you'll have far more success if you learn to play with a click uh, and eventually learn to use tracks. But again, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But here's what I would encourage you to do. Head to fromstudiosage.com slash clicks because if you want to get started, I've got a free set of click tracks in every uh, tempo from like, I think 50 to 150, something like that. It's a lot of click tracks, so be patient when you're downloading it. But you can download those. You can play them on your iPhone. You can play them on your Android device. You can play them on anything that loads um, audio files. And you can start practicing with a click, learn how to play with a click. And that's going to be a skill that's going to help you eventually get and keep the gig. Another thing you could do that's gonna benefit you greatly is subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon. Every single day, 10 a.m. Central, I post a brand new tutorial. Every single Monday, I post a brand new episode of Behind the Space Bar. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Thanks for watching. Again, not all these episodes will be rants with uh, crazy old Uncle Will complaining, but I uh, appreciate you um, uh, supporting this channel, supporting this podcast. If you're from Studio Stage member uh, and part of the community, thanks so much for being a part of the community. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.